Hey, everybody. Hi, guys. Well, from Salt Lake City, Utah, it's Thank God I'm Atheist, the podcast. I'm Frank. And I'm Mark, sitting in for either Frank or Dan. I can't keep track. <laughs> <laughs> Well, welcome back, Mark. Good to be back. It's always good to have you here. On this chilly day. I know you make a lot of people happy when you're here. I hope I make a lot of people <laughs> sad, too. That's no. the goal, isn't it? No. Oh, well, thanks to happy people. Dan. Dan. Uh, who cares about Dan? <laughs> Somebody finally said what everybody's thinking. <laughs> and he doesn't when, listen and to when this. I'm, and when I'm not here, there's a bunch of people saying, ah, who cares about Frank? So. I, but n- you, neither of you guys listen to this, so... <laughs> No, I know. He has no clue what we're saying. He has right no now. clue. All right. Well, you got any? You got any stories? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, let's start with uh, close to home in our neighbor to the north, Idaho. Oh yeah. Um, you know, in Idaho, struggles to <laughs> join the twentieth century. Well, and this is coming from a Utah. <laughs> uh, but in Idaho, uh, religious freedom trumps the welfare of children. Oh, yeah. Uh, last June, we reported, uh, that we being whoever this publication is, that a petition had been launched calling on Idaho Governor, B- B- it's his real name, Butch Otter, uh, uh, <laughs> to remove legal protections that allow faith healing families to avoid prosecution if their beliefs result in children dying from lack of proper medical care. I'm pretty sure a Butch Otter is actually... Something more in the gay community, but, but, but you've heard of the otters. Oh yeah, I mean it's a, it's a, I'm looking a at it otter. in my web br- browser right now. <laughs> don't don't do a Google search for Butch Otter. Do a Google search for Butch Otter. <laughs> if only they were the governor of Idaho. Uh, so anyway, this petition went around to because Idaho has this crazy exemption that if you're some <clears throat> anti-vax kookaboo, but it has to be religion religiously based. It's this old, sincerely based, sincerely held religious beliefs. Oh, right. Because there's a blood test for that or something. So if you don't get a blood transfusion or or whatever for your kid and they die, if you say, Jesus, (laughs) literally, you are not responsible for the death of a child in your care. So a petition went around Idaho to uh to force the legislature to uh repeal the law uh-huh. and garnered an amazing 1178 signatures mm-hmm. <clears throat> so it didn't clear any hurdle yeah uh and then a democratic state representative tried to bring up bring this up in uh in committee to see if they if he could get the bill overturned the republicans wouldn't even schedule oh my god wouldn't even schedule anything so uh yeah so that remains in place in Idaho Religious exemption for killing your child. <laughs> yeah. So great. That Faith killing. Parents have civil rights, but don't children also have civil rights? Um. Yeah, they should. Right. Not to like, die of a completely preventable uh, uh, illness. Uh, uh, because of stupid parents. Because of incredibly stupid parents. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It seems like the rest of us should be protecting kids from that. Yeah. By just passing some decent laws. Yeah. Yeah, that's really disgusting. Well, when you have an otter for a governor, it's <laughs> oh, no wonder a, a crazy butch otter. I mean, he's nonetheless, a but, he's Ooh. not a femme otter. <laughs> Are there femme otters? You <laughs> never seen otters? I don't know. Oh my god, they're so silky and sleek in the water. <laughs> anyway, so that's <laughs> that's. Oh. I, I don't know what you've got, but that's hopefully the shittiest story. Yeah. We well, have. I I've got I've got this one <clears throat> about. Easter being canceled in Stockton, California, <laughs> or at least an interfaith citywide celebration of Easter. Uh-huh. Uh, so Stockton police chaplain, chaplain uh, Jim Reed, uh, has uh, been the, or is the most recent organizer of a 17-year uh, event uh, that, that the city puts on. Mm. Uh, for every every Easter, it's a C- Easter sunrise service, um, and uh, you know all faiths invited. I guess oh, the, the, uh, if they believe in the Jesus, you, you know, because Jews love Easter, <laughs> Muslims love Easter. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so he reaches out to the minister over at the uh, Valley Ministries mm. in Stockton, and invites the, uh, ch- the, the, the the minister there to uh, to attend. And then he realizes that Valley Ministries is a predominantly LGBT church. Oh. And that uh, <laughs> Terry, Terry Miller, 
the reverend over there is a lady. Oh. And she'd be bringing along her wife. Terry is such a deceptive name. <laughs> That's uh, and so he retracts his invitation. He pull he, he he and he uses his city email account to do so, As stating the reason why. And he says we are diametrically different in our view of scripture when it comes to homosexuality. And now he's been placed on leave by the Stockton <laughs> Police Department. Uh-huh. And then he was fired. Oh, poor mm-hmm. dumb thing. So poor de- in his defense, a Terry could be either. <laughs> yeah. a, so it's really on Terry. Here. It's like a Jerry or a Sean, you know, yeah. Chris. they should say, this is my gender. Yeah. Right. Yeah. He's, uh, yeah. Terry girl and Terry boy. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That whole he, thing. Terry. He, <laughs> yeah. It's so important, you know, cause you never know what's going to happen if you so, don't know I, the, has the whole service been canceled? So this is what happened. Uh, because of all this, uh, uh, the, 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 the dust that's been stirred up over this whole issue and the media attention that it's gotten, the uh, Stockton Leadership Foundation, which is the organizing group for the interfaith service, uh, has called off this year's event because they, they don't want the transforming message of Easter, that's their words, uh, to be overshadowed as a result of the well-publicized clergy invitations uh reed uh jim reed he's the 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 did i mention his name before he's the uh the chaplain or former chaplain Uh, yeah and uh he's actually on the foundation's board and uh he he said that the participation the the valley ministry's participation would have created a media frenzy at this year's event i felt it would defeat defeat the purpose of having it i didn't think it would bring glory and honor to God. I was in favor of canceling. Mm. So instead Smart of having move, yeah. anybody show up with cameras to see them be a bunch of bigots, right. they've just opted to not have Easter service. You don't want to make a circus out of a celebration of a dead Jew coming out of a cave, <laughs> right? That's, That's basically the message here. Yeah, it would be a circus. Yeah. yeah. And so, yeah, unfortunately in Stockton, uh, old mud town... Is, what's is, Mudtown is, or Mudville? Mudville is that Mudville? Yeah, I remember Casey at the bat. Was that in Stockton, California? Well, it's Mudville and Stockton. Why do you get Mudville? Where did you Mudville. get Mudville out of? Stockton? It was called Mudville before it was called Stockton. How do you know that? I used to live near Stockton. Oh, <laughs> like what? <laughs> what the hell are you talking about? Yeah, part of my childhood was <clears throat> in Manteca, California. Hmm. I don't think of yeah. That's uh, probably news to all the Manteca listeners. Uh, <laughs> I don't think I've ever mentioned uh, that before. And was it muddy? Not now, but there's like the... It dried the, out. Well, there's like the Sacramento River and all that and the Delta <sighs> right there. And I don't know any it of It probably used to be really... Yeah, I'm sure it was all muddy at one point. That's great. Why not? You know? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for bringing it up. <laughs> oh, should I do something? Or are you still... You got no, I'm Easter? done. <clears throat> Please, got, I'm done. The gays ruining Easter. Oh, just <clears throat> awful. Terry. We ruin everything. Fucking Terry. Well, I'm suddenly realizing realizing this is a little bit like the first story, but it's all part of this wacky pushback against, you know, LGBT people getting rights in this country led by, uh, what's the, what are they called? Christians. <laughs> so Missouri's GOP-led Senate on Wednesday advanced a proposal to add greater religious protections to the state constitution for some business owners oh. and individuals opposed to gay marriage after Democrats stalled a vote for more than 30 hours. They filibustered. In fact, I think I saw that it was almost a 40-hour filibuster. 40-hour? 40 40-hour 40 filibuster. It's not That's like that, intense. that Ron Paul filibuster where you stand there for 20 minutes and say, I got to take a pee and it's over. Right. This was a real old-timey talk, talking filibuster. So one guy gets up and reads the telephone book. I think they could switch off. Oh, okay. But I don't know what the interval is. Who knows? It's, you know, in Missouri, what their rules are. Okay. Um, so... Anyway, these guys, good for them. They filibustered, filibustered for more than 30 hours. But this is a, another law that allows you to kind of do whatever you want. Right. As long as you say Jesus. Right. You know, and, and again, it's this uh, sincere religious belief. Right. Which I'm just baffled by that. I know I keep bringing it up, but how do you know? How, how do you know what someone's sincere religious belief is? Well, it's probably like uh, proving uh, insanity in cases as a defense, right? I think it's very much like that. <laughs> in fact, I think you're on to something. <laughs> but anyway, unfortunately, the, the, the 
amazing filibuster did not work. And do we need to explain what a filibuster is? Is that uh, yeah. I, because we do have international listeners, and that's not and they don't do that normal st- parliamentary stupid thing. shit in other countries, do they? <laughs> Yeah, filibuster is is you know th- this weird uh, uh, kind of parliamentary tactic in the United States, yeah. where you know during the course of debate, technically you can kind of keep talking as long as you want, and right. I guess it that's a kind of a good thing because it allows for rigorous debates and right everything to be heard. That doesn't usually happen in our country. Um, you know, the lobbyists just, debate. yeah, the lobbyists just say, here's how it's going to be. And so right. that the law gets made. Right. So it, basically when you filibuster, you just keep talking. Right. And I think rules differ. Like it, I think in the United States Senate, uh-huh. you cannot tag team. Right. You, I don't think you can sit down and you can't use the bathroom and you can't eat. And you can't lean on anything. Right. Like, I don't can know. You lean on the podium. I know in Texas you can't. And that's when Wendy Davis tried to filibuster in Texas. And okay. She had to stand not touching anything. Oh, dear God. So cuckoo. But awful. So if you can delay a bill. Right. Ever getting passed if the timing's as, right. As long as you can keep talking. As long as you can As long can as you don't talking. yield the floor. I think in Missouri uh-huh. they were able to, uh, to tap out and someone else could talk. But, well, that um, kind of defeats the purpose. I think it should be one person's, you know, stamina. Yeah. They, whatever they are able to endure. Yeah. Because otherwise, like, if you can just, like, tag team it, you can just hold up the whole system for... Yeah, Bernie Sanders did, like, nine hours one time. Oh, dear God. Yeah. Um, anyway, so a, a filibuster can be used for good or for evil. In yeah. this case, uh, it seems to me there was an attempt made to use it for good. <laughs> and even then, they didn't beat the clock. So right. now it is a... Uh, I believe it's going ahead. All right. Yeah. Okay. Well... Oh, which way to go? Which way to go? Um, not to Missouri. Not to Missouri. Well, here's here's a uh, here's something interesting, and I think it's going to ring true mm. to to our listeners. Mm. Uh, clearly, uh, we all live in this in this wonderful country mm. of America, and uh, with the filibuster, with the filibuster, <laughs> and we we've all been noticing that religious devotion is sort of. Seems to be seems to be on the decline, kind of, sort of. With some of. loud exceptions. Yeah, but yeah. like that's more, hopefully that's death rattle type stuff. Yeah. Uh, apparently, there was a recent uh, study published in the American Journal of Sociology that looked at numbers uh, from, the, uh, from the general social survey, hmm. uh, which is conducted every two years by the government. Uh, hmm. And uh, by the U.S. government, like I a, believe so. Huh. A study examined U.S. data from the general. So maybe it's not from the U.S. government. I don't know who does the. I don't know who does the thing. The government. Anyway, don't uh, you worry about it. And uh, so they 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 compared those numbers from uh, to uh, similar data from Great Britain, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, and in order to look at the religiosity of Americans. And according to the study, we are becoming less religious over time. And but it's it's the the trend has been so gradual in mm-hmm. the United States that they haven't that the, the social scientists have really been leery of drawing any sort of uh, conclusions right. on what's going on until basically now. And oh. they're they're willing to say that it's that the religion is on the on the decline. Uh, some of the numbers, uh, 68% of Americans aged 65 and over say that they have no doubt God existed compared to 45% of young adults aged 18 to 30. Hmm. So, I mean, I've never found it surprising that older people might, you know, mm-hmm. believe more in God right. or be more diligent about showing up to church and making God happy, but that's right? Still- because you're about to... You're getting older. Yeah. You feel, you f- you'll feel your time, you know, slipping away from you. You're looking right at me when you say that. <laughs> it's creeping me out, man. What do you know? So, <laughs> so what, what percentage of people over 65? So only 68. Yeah, that's say not that, that they, high. They had no doubt that God existed. Hmm. Which are, yeah, already that's, that's kind it of seems surprising. Yeah, yeah. Because that, that leaves 32% of people that have, that are, that are, 
that are harboring maybe some uh, some questions, some yeah. doubt, yeah. or perhaps just flat don't believe, or right. they're they're polytheists and they didn't ask God the, the, the right question, right? They didn't pluralize it. That's probably it. <laughs> That's probably what the anomaly there. Yeah, they're from Caprica. <laughs> what? Mudville. They're from Mudtown. <laughs> no. Battlestar Galactica. Oh, Frank. I don't you know, know what they... Oh, God damn it. <laughs> Everybody said I should watch that series, but I never did, because all I could think of was the 80s one, and it was just... Just awful. Well, Lord I Green. will say, uh, and I'm probably going to alienate a lot of our listeners. Uh-oh. Uh, I, liked, I liked Battlestar Galactica. I really liked the miniseries that they produced, mm. and so then I kind of gave the series like this big long chance yeah after that uh, no nah. nah not so much right but the miniseries was fan- fantastic really good oh well, maybe yeah. i'll watch the miniseries. i would highly recommend the miniseries the only, you know the only reason as a closeted boy i watched it in the 80s was you know was there a hottie starbuck was kind of dreamy well the starbuck in this one's a lady oh what in the world <laughs> I'm going to disappoint. Can- Maybe I'm, I shouldn't have told you. I'm going to cancel Easter. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> oh, it's a world gone mad. Deal. Cancel Easter. All right. Um, and then uh, let's see. 41% of people over uh, 70 and older said they attend church services at least once a month. Only 41%. Yeah, that's crazy. Like, okay, I, this is not. That's amazing. Uh, these are not highly religious folk compared to 18 percent of people 60 and below 60 and below yeah at church at 10 church once a month that's all i'm kind of not blown even away. that i'm blown away i thought the numbers would be much yeah. higher or i'm sorry yeah yeah 82 percent of wow. americans do not attend church at least once a month wow so apparently all the people who attend <laughs> church uh uh, uh, every week, uh, live right here in Utah. God, no shit. <laughs> I'm probably, probably down in, in Texas. Yeah, probably there's a good number of them down in Texas and Oklahoma. In Oklahoma, another place, another muddy place yeah. you've lived. Yeah. And then I would say, just like, uh, yeah, just like go through the South and the Bible. That's it. That's it. And, but, but even then, in those places, church attendance can't be that high. No, you know. 50%, 60%? What a weird... What? A, uh, who did the study? The government? So it was uh, the, the... No. In air the, quotes? Uh, the, the UCL Institute of Education, which is in the UK, hmm. and uh, Duke University. Hmm. Boy, that's that's the best news I've heard all day. Yeah. And so they're they're saying that we're, we're sort of mirroring uh, the patterns from across the, the Western world. Yeah, in Europe, that, for sure. That, that these things were just showing up more quickly... In Europe and Canada and wow, Australia, thank New Zealand, but like, God, but like here, yeah, it's really um, it's starting to take hold, and thank goodness, yeah. Uh, not that I want to uh, be out of a job, <laughs> podcasting wise. There'll always be dum dums <laughs> out there. There'll always be dum dums <laughs> like this guy. But I would gladly stop <clears throat> podcasting if there, the. There, will, there was no more need. There will always be guys like <laughs> Alec Nidwane for us to talk about. Oh, okay. All right. So Please tell. we all remember the story, that the true story of Daniel in the lion's den. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, so the, the Israelite Daniel was tossed into the Babylonian lion's den mm. for reasons and uh, prayed to, to his God, not yet Jesus. He was a Jew. Well, Daniel was, so was Jesus. Anyway, this is, I'm, I'm in the weeds. So <laughs> he was not consumed by the lions uh, because right, of a right. miracle. And the next day yeah. when uh, Balthazar opened the tomb and saw him inside and was like, oh, it's a miracle. Right. So Alec Nidwane, he was so filled with the Holy Spirit when he decided to challenge lions at the Kruger National Park. Oh, no. The Zion Christian Church prophet was at the park with his fellow church members when, according to <laughs> Ghana Webb, he went into a trance and began speaking in tongues. Oh. The group approached the pride of lions while they munched happily on an antelope. God, that just seems like a bad idea. Uh, and th- yeah, antelope's terrible. Oh, right? Ew. <laughs> but that's when Nidwani ran toward the lions. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just like open sprint charging the lions trance i didn't think you could run dead out in a trance oh 
right? Yeah, no, you could. I could. I if I were in a trance, I could pull it off. I, I'm not just, in a trance, and just, I can't. Ah, I can't yeah, run no. in a dead sprint. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, they, uh, uh, surprisingly, they nearly killed him. Um, the, the really? ranger fired his gun into the air to scare off the lions, uh, but the lions basically ate his ass. So <laughs> I guess it's a, it, it's, buttocks. It, it's not a clear victory for either side. God did save most of him. <laughs> uh, and the lions got a little piece too. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess and, it, it's and a taste of human flesh. It's a draw. They're going to, these lions will be out of control now. Right. It's, what was that movie? Remember the, uh, night and dark. What was that movie <laughs> I don't know. with the lions and Africa, but there was like a mechanized lion or something. Oh, Fuck, I don't goodness. remember. It doesn't Attacking people. Yeah. I think I've got oh, two movies mixed good. up. It's Battlestar Galactica. Is that a sci-fi movie? Yeah. Yeah. So he doesn't have an ass anymore as the upshot. So, Oh, poor guy. Poor dummy. But he's alive. So there, w- there was a miracle. I just want to say God saved most yeah. of them. Yeah. 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 Uh, Prayers need to be very God, specific. God worked through that park ranger and his gun. Yeah. To save Indwane or whatever yeah. his name was. But not his arse. Yeah. So that's, yeah, that's good. Yeah. No, that's we're fine with that. You got another one? I was also thinking about Christian martyrs as you were talking about that too. There's a long history of Christians with lions. Yes. You know, being thrown to the lions and yes. the Colosseum and whatnot. Yeah. yeah. I, unfortunately, not long enough. I mean, I think that, that that's something that we could investigate bringing back. Don't you think? And <laughs> worst case, you know. Uh, moving on. All right. <laughs> um, perhaps. I, I, I am kidding. Perhaps uh, Ndwane. Uh, could have benefited from uh, something that these uh, Christians, these Christian groups are offering. Oh. Uh, there, it, it's, a, it's a thing that's actually existed for decades now. They're called uh, health care sharing ministries. Uh, but they've only recently become popular due to, uh, well, maybe Obamacare. Mm. Uh, because Christians don't, you know, these conservative Christian types kind of don't want to participate in Obamacare because no, the they do Obama not. Obama involved. That's right. Are included. Um, anyway, that's black magic. Uh, there's also something interesting about the affordable care act, which is the real name for Obamacare. Um, when it passed in 2010, it, uh, it actually included an exemption, uh, for these kind of groups. Uh, so I, or I mean, so I'm sorry for citizens who are participating in these kind of groups to have to go out and get insurance. They were immune from the mandate. They are immune from the mandate. Uh. You can actually uh, participate in one of these, even though they are not technically health insurance. Uh, it, it, it you won't have to pay the fine, the, the annual fine, if you're not insured, if okay. you're participating in one of these. It took way too long to say that. Um, <laughs> all right. So the way that they work, much like insurance, members of a of a sharing ministry re- are required to pay monthly into an account. That's typically how they work because it's because these Isn't things that are not kind insurance, of how insurance works? right? Because, but because it's not insurance, it's not regulated. Oh God. Right. This is just going to get worse, isn't it? <laughs> so they, they pay monthly into a lot of, for a lot of them, they pay monthly into accounts. Some, some of them are actually like peer to peer support. So it's more sort of the centralized ministry is more sort of a matchmaker that's saying, hey, you, you there, you send your money this month over there, right? And then they, they receive like oh. checks written out in their name and all that kind of stuff. So it's, some of them work that way, but it sounds okay. like a large, large number of them, a large majority of them perhaps even require this monthly payment into a central fund, which is then dispersed to those who, are, who have eligible medical bills. Uh, and this is where it starts to get really screwy. Pre-existing medical conditions are often not covered, uh, nor is preventative care, mental health, or injuries resulting from behavior that the ministry might consider to be, you know, inappropriate or a oh, sin, man. right? Immoral. Um, so no butt stuff. So if a member of the uh, sharing ministry acquires a sexually transmitted disease from an extramarital affair... They don't get any of their health care covered uh, for that uh, for that problem. Um, also, if you were injured while driving drunk or if you got like in a bar fight or something like that. Right. They're, they're going to exclude you from right. from coverage. So there's that. 
Jesus. Uh, now, unfortunately, for the members of and these then groups, they just pay cash for the. They just take that pool of money for. Yeah, they just pay, they just pay cash. Just so pay it's a cash. reimbursement, typically, is the way that it works. Oh. So you have to pay for your medical care up front. Okay. And then the pl- the the I almost called it a plan. Okay. Uh, the ministry reimburses you after a careful review of how that thing got in your to, bum. Exactly. Right. Yes. If your wife put it there. Right. And it's I don't know, a cell phone. Yeah. And not a dildo. Yeah, cell phones. Then, fine. then you're fine. Right. Yeah. 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 Or a light bulb, maybe. Obviously. I've heard of some awful things. I've had friends who worked in ERs. Yeah. People come in with crazy stuff up their bums. Yeah. And most of them have some story of, you know, oh, I tripped and fell. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Just ridiculous. <laughs> but anyway, all right. Um, so in 2001, uh, in Ohio, there was one of these funds where, guess what? Tell me. <laughs> uh, the uh, attorney general sued the ministry mm. because and and, and the, they ended up forcing its leaders uh, to repay 15 million dollars that they had spent on homes vehicles oh wow uh, excessive salaries uh, etc oh god what a huge surprise right yeah like that's the thing is that just like insurance <laughs> there's some sort of central organization yeah people have to get paid yeah. And if you're unregulated, it's so weird. It's going there's there's just you're just exposed. It's so weird for, to, that to, for a fraud. giant slush religious slush fund without regulation <laughs> could go wrong. I know, right? What the hell, man? <laughs> well, you know, it's just a quick aside. It's a funny thing. Uh, funny thing. In, in New Orleans, there are these in Louisiana, these things called social aid and pleasure clubs. OK, that still exist, but they now are more. Uh, pleasure they put on parades they do have uh you know social organizations but they were developed because black people could not be could not get insurance oh so this they had a form of what you were talking about okay. there where people would kind of pay into uh, an informal system right that would you know try to cover expenses mostly to do with funerals and and widows and stuff like oh, interesting. that so okay. yeah because it used to be i know you're going to think this is crazy in america it used to be that black people were treated terribly <laughs> Right. Not anymore. Right. Well, you know, Phew. if you talk to Christians, especially these Christians, mm. they think they're being treated terribly. As long as they're you white know. Christians, yes, that yeah. they're being treated they're, terribly. Terribly. Just yeah. absolutely terribly. Uh, so what's interesting to me mm. is they're opting out of uh, Obamacare, right. which means that l- let's say they had gotten a plan through Obamacare. Yeah. They would have been covered for pre-existing conditions. Yeah. Right? They would have been covered for preventative care. They would have been covered for mental health. For mysterious genital issues. And, and that as well. Yeah. Right? Like, like those were, like, extension, like, those were things that Obamacare was trying to address. Yeah. Or the Affordable Care Act yeah. was trying to address in our, in our horrible insurance system. Yeah. Right? I mean, it's just wretched. Even worse than that, yes. And and now these people are entering into a system where they're having to pay hundreds of dollars a month. Four hundred and fifty dollars, I think, is what they said wow. this one family was paying in every month. Yeah. And they have not only basic coverage, right? They don't even have a guarantee right. that they will get money back out. Yeah, it's just up to the discretion of these ding dongs that Yeah. You because know, suddenly and, have big houses and, and and here's people on record who participate in this saying things like uh oh, oh no the, the 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 i'm sorry the uh, the 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 plans make it clear that that the members uh uh need to just trust that god will provide sounds good because they're not in a position to actually guarantee that there will be enough money in the fund to cover whatever comes its what way. What are they doing? What are they fucking thinking paying into this thing? It's amazing. Well, it's faith-based. God, I guess you that's know. it. Magical thinking. <laughs> good God. <laughs> you know, Jesus will provide and like and and the story you read through the story and everything and it recounts, you know, incidents of, you know, people shares this one story of this family sitting around waiting for like sixty thousand dollars or something like that to come come in or maybe it was it wasn't sixty it was it was like six thousand dollar surgery that they had to pay for their daughter's ear tube surgery Jesus. right 
and they had to wait like 90 days for the money to start showing up. And it's coming along with handwritten notes, you know, and, uh, so wait, had they already had the surgery? Or are they waiting? So they had the surgery. You pay oh, up front. Okay. So right? they, she at and least so got the treatment. They don't have any. They don't have a lot of money. Yeah. And they've they've come. They're, they've paid sixty five hundred dollars. Probably put it on credit cards. Oh, yeah. You know. And they're sitting around now, desperate, trying to. Oh my God! I hope this money comes. I hope it comes. They're waiting ninety days. And then of course, when the when the money arrives, they they have like this crazy, overwhelming experience because the money's coming in, and the mom's like, and I I found myself just crying right well of course relief your bills are being covered uh, why in god's name did you even go down this route in the first place what is wrong with people and and so the miracle is that it fucking worked it, that's yes, the miracle is that that, that is the it miracle. didn't work well no but it kind of sort of worked in the end right so you know yeah and i mean I am not saying that there are not problems with our insurance system, right? And that yeah. people don't get dicked around by the insurance companies. But it seems like you actually have some sort of like legal recourse yeah. as a consumer in dealing with your insurance company because it's this regulated entity. There are laws and yeah. regulations. They're going to find blah, a way blah. to fuck you over, but at least there's an attempt to stop them from doing it. Right. You Somebody's an attorney. You can like go after him, blah, blah, yeah. blah. Are you going to succeed? Who knows? Right. But this, good luck. Yeah. Jesus will provide, maybe. And there's no legal, there's no legal, there's no regulation of it at well, all. So there's, they there's really no can oversight. do whatever they want. Well, thank God. What, what state was that in? It's, they're all over. Oh, they're Texas all over. is huge oh. uh, with them. They've actually, Texas, Oklahoma, Florida um, were, were mentioned in the article as all having passed laws actually specifically exempting, exempting them from any kind of insurance regulation. Uh, time now, for a filibuster. Guaranteed, those, those are not the only three states that have done so. Sure. Yeah. You know, I mean, there are three states that make sense that would have done so. But uh, so the, And the reason people join it is because they, oh, I know why. Because they think their money is not going to pay for contraception and abortion, and that's why, right? So I'm sure, yeah. Wow, that, that that would be a good reason. And then also just you know digging your heels in Obamacare. Boo! You don't participate in Obamacare. Boo! I hate Obama. I hate Obama. Yeah. To your own detriment. Now you are <laughs> hating Obama. Well, yeah, it's you know you know there is long been the discussion of people, especially very conservative working class or below people voting against their economic interests. This is voting against your life. <laughs> yeah. People like this is voting yeah. against your life. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. But just like the exemption in Idaho. Yeah, exactly. When it comes to health, they'll, they'll, they'll Jesus trust Trump's in Jesus. All. They'll, they'll, yeah. they'll just have faith. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, thanks. That was a great story. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Did you start? Yeah. All right. So if you'd like to join the conversation, if you have anything you would like to add uh, about any of the things that we've talked about, you can do so by emailing us. The email address is podcast at thankgodimatheist.com. Or you can call and leave a voicemail. That's uh, the number for that is 424-666-8442. You can also find us on Facebook, facebook.com slash TGI atheist. And uh, while you're there on Facebook, search for the TGIA members only lounge. You have to request to join. It's a closed group, uh, but maybe we'll let you in. Yeah, but maybe uh, not. And if, if you feel like you belong, because, you know, let's face it, you're atheist yeah. and you do belong. And, you know, a week or two goes by or you just receive like a denial. I don't know how it all works. Um, request again or shoot us an email and say, hey, I'm trying to get like... I'm trying to get in, but you guys denied me. Yeah. Look at me again. Because we vet you, right? We don't want, you know, outsiders. There's background this checks. Is, this, is a, this, is a, this is a very exclusive community. It's very exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to take a quick break. Uh, this clip is coming from the Jim Baker show, <laughs> uh, where they're talking some sense. It's Baker with two Ks, which I can't get over how weird that is. <laughs> so who's the joiner guy who's there? Because that's, that's the guy who actually ends up saying the I, nonsense. He's kind of new to name? me. I haven't seen yeah, him before. I, the, the, 
I don't I don't know who he is. He doesn't quite have the punch of of the the catch a baby out your ass. Who's that <laughs> preacher man? <laughs> I can I can't remember his name. <laughs> but he's he's amazing too. Yes. Mr. Trump is uh saying some outlandish things. Again I say, do you think this is perhaps why Trump is so high in the ratings at this moment is because he saw the picture of what's happening with ISIS and others. He sees the, the infiltration of every state of, of people who want to destroy America. And uh, so he has said, we need to do something about it. He's getting things out into the discussion. And he's ruling That's true. the media right now. He is controlling the media mm-hmm. like nobody's ever controlled When it. I was That's a boy, yeah. Truman was considered a bad president by the church people. And I'm just talking about the church I went to, because so I, I that was my world. And he used salty language, is what they said it called it back then. And today, Truman is considered one of our great presidents. Is that not right? Mm -hmm. And we church people, we love Truman because he stood up for Israel. I don't know why we didn't realize that back then. then. The church doesn't have, in general, doesn't have much savvy. Hmm. And the Lord said you need that. So you've got to be wise as serpents. Mm Mm-hmm. You really need, there's some wisdom here you really need to have, Mm -hmm. but harmless as doves. Mm -hmm. You look at the type of leaders that Jesus chose, they were more like Donald Trump's. Mm. (laughs) The sea sea people. I was thinking of a sea captain when we were talking. And think of how he treated them. The salty sea language. We think of Jesus as just this big teddy bear. Mm -hmm. Think of this. These are some of the toughest guys you could find. Mm -hmm. He puts them together. They hate each other. Mm-hmm. When he calls them, puts them together, lives with them for three and a half years. After three and a half years of li- living with Jesus, the night before he's crucified, they're afraid to ask him a question. Mm-hmm. John, you ask him. Yeah. Yeah. He called me Satan. Mm-hmm. He won't call you Satan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You think about it. I yeah. mean, Jesus was a tough character. Yeah. These are tough guys, and they're intimidated by him. After three and a half years of living with him. So I'm just saying, bless his heart. Yeah, bless yeah. his heart. <laughs> bless, bless his heart. Bless I, that Donald Trump's heart. I'm not even sure what the fuck. Was, like, what are they talking? So Jesus was a badass? Jesus was a badass. He was a tough uh, dude. He his was, disciples were intimidated by him. That's uh, Don. Clearly, Donald. Yeah. The Donald, the Donald is like yeah. Jesus. Wow. And his followers are like Jesus' disciples. Who, Isn't that what he's saying? Jesus' disciples who frequently punched out black people at his rallies. Yeah, I remember that they're at the tough. Sermon on the Mount. Yeah. The disciples just shit canning a bunch of black folks, right? They, they were a ragtag bunch. Sure. Yeah. <sighs> so you, you mentioned this a little before we started recording that this uh, this... Uh, bizarre Christian, po- uh, what's that? Ad hoc, post hoc, proctor, something, something. I'm sorry to get oh, a little Latin on you. Post hoc, ergo, proctor hoc. That's probably it. Yeah. Uh, before of, therefore, because of, or yeah. something like that. It's I don't Latin, but yeah, yeah. But the I, you know, this crazy idea that they're trying to justify that they're going to have to just, they're going to have to vote for a. Thrice divorced, twice divorced. Yeah, misogynist. Well, they don't care about misogyny, but 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 Donald Trump is the physical embodiment of the seven deadly sins. Uh-huh. He's all of it, <laughs> right? And so they're going to vote for that guy. So yeah. there's this bizarre kind of like, well, it, it doesn't matter that he's divorced and that he's this right. and that, and that he once gave money to Hillary Clinton and he went to a gay wedding and yeah, you know, fuck, no, so why not? So yeah, that will. Yeah, they are trying desperately, desperately yeah. to get their, their followers to look the other way on all of this. The thing that's funny, though, is they seem to be down with him dis- 
you know what I mean? It's not. I don't know that they have so, to justify that much. So, so you think you think they're fine looking at him square squares who he is square as what am square, I trying as, to say right warts uh, and all. I th- yeah, I think so. Huh? I I you know the, they pretend that's, that's they pretend that shit matters when it comes to someone like Bill Clinton or you right. Know, but but if it's a if it's a guy that they feel tribally connected to and he's he's angry and hateful of all the people they're angry and hateful at huh. what does it matter yeah i i really think that's what it comes down to because i just are don't... you saying mm-hmm. that they are maybe being hypocrites i would you... i would not go so far i would not go so far that is a very serious charge <laughs> um yeah i mean he is he, he is so gross <laughs> but but he's just such an asshole, which yeah, yeah. which they appreciate. They appreciate. They look. Li- they yeah. Uh, well, it turns out they liked Truman. <laughs> they and were, I love that's they amazing. Were, Jim Baker, who went to jail for defrauding millions of dollars out of people, is like, well, we didn't like his salty language. <laughs> I don't care for cussing. You're a fucking felon. You're a fucking felon. So oh. shut up about salty language. God. <laughs> Somebody punch uh. him in both Ks. <laughs> Idiot. Yeah, I miss Tammy Faye. I do too. She was a sweetheart. She, well, she was something. Live with her puppets. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I forgot the crazy ass puppets that were so spooky. Oh, it was the, yeah, it was like the creepiest. Uh, what was it? What do they call on uh, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood? <laughs> like Lady Elaine. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's clearly what she was trying to do. Right. These were just like, oh, my God. Yeah, and Mr. Rogers' puppets were a little freaky, they, Yeah, too. They, were on the, they were on the verge. They were, in the, they were in the uncanny valley. Well, oh, we didn't announce what we were going to be talking about at the beginning of the show. Sure, really, this is just, the first time we're so we just have to like dive right in. Should we rewind the tape and start? Dear over? God, no! The reel to reel. <laughs> we don't do that. Right, we don't the show d- is barely edited. <laughs> it's every barely once a, in a while, it's barely a show. No, oh. <laughs> every once in a while there'll be a technical glitch, it, or one of us is just like total brain fart. But no, otherwise, we don't edit. No emails, no no phone calls. We're not doing this. <sighs> right, no, let's just no, let's do no. this. We got we got to get through this. I'm actually on a little bit of a time crunch today, so. Uh, I'm not. I can just stay and keep. I can keep filibustering. Eighteen more minutes. Let's do it. Okay. So we were going to talk about. Well, okay. So there was this article on the religious news service um, that kind of caught my eye, and it was about. It, it kind of posed the question: Is is it time to reconsider religious art? It, it, has it progressed to a place where we can just consider it? art and is it has it become sophisticated is it you know and so i'm like i read through the damn thing and i'm looking at it and i'm like no <laughs> no uh, and they had they showed a couple pictures of this guy's uh art that he's he's putting out there yeah and it's you know it's he he was asking one question about like race and and faith and whatnot. Okay, okay. Maybe to to Christians, that's really challenging stuff. Yeah, that's really questioning the the, the, the status quo, the whole thing. It was like a a, a young African American uh, man, probably a teenager actually, who's like he's got like his he has a t shirt on that he's kind of lifting up, and it's a little bloody. Yeah, and, and it looks like it it, it hearkens to. The, the spear in the side of Jesus. Jesus. Right? Jesus. Yeah. Um, that's the only indicator that he might be a stand in for Jesus. Right. And to there me, that no was stigmata. I would have put stigmata. To me, on. that was more a political piece of art than a religious piece of art anyway. It's like yeah, no, a black okay. teen who's right. been wounded. A right. contemporary American black teen has been yeah. wounded. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah, exactly. I think it's a religious reference. Right. I don't know that it's religious art. Right. You know, yeah. Symbolism. And then they like referenced some church. I don't think this was involved with this guy, but something in Germany where they, graf- or England maybe, where they graffitied up the inside mm-hmm. and all of a sudden they had all these people wanting to come see the graffitied up church. Yep. Um, I don't, is they, that religious art or did you just graffiti <sighs> up a church? Yeah. I, you I, know, 
So I, I mean, or, or what are you really saying with that graffiti inside of the church? Right. Is it a you gimmick? Know? Yeah. And, and I, I guess that goes back to, well, cathedrals are a gimmick. You know, this was, huh. this was theater, right? You know, this was to, the, in the Middle Ages, these poor slobs who lived in the mud, right? You know, and scraped by, they would go to this place that was just so, I can't even imagine to your mind in 14 something, if you went yeah. to Chartres and saw that, it would oh, be, God, yeah. blow on your some, socks off. On some crazy pilgrimage and you're from some even poorer yeah. village than the, than, yeah. Than the one that built the cathedral. Right. And yeah. it would, it would so it's not like Chartres is like a huge town. Right. Even today. Right. Yeah, and that's true you of know. a lot of a lot of the the religious centers of Europe. But anyway, yeah. the, you know, f- when Frank brought up this topic, I thought it was a great idea because it's just kind of a, the larger idea of, um, you know, re- religion and art and politics, mm-hmm. yeah. right? And and this article was so fascinating because this guy who po- seems to be a serious art critic or something, yeah, is like, oh no, it's time, it's time to look at this stuff as you know. As art, as and and not just art in service of, right, a, a dogmatic faith promoting art, right? Yes, but but to look at it, to hold it in on an equal plane as you would, you know, any other untethered expression, right? right. You know, unfettered expression, right. of art. And I just personally, I think that's bullshit, right? Because you know, religious art, you know, art in service of religion is propaganda, right? Right, and right. I. I'm a happen to be a big lover of like, you know, Soviet propaganda art and, and, mm-hmm. you know, but I rec- I recognize what it is. I right. mean, I think it's kind of awesome because it is so powerful and it has such, you know, such mus- muscularity to it, but uh-huh. it, I know what it is. It's a, it's promoting the, the state. Yeah. yeah it's promoting yeah. the state. Yeah. So, uh, and no matter how well, ex- well executed it is, no matter how, how good the craftsman Mm-hmm. Or the the the, the, the painter, or the dra- or the graphic artist yeah. was, is it you know? So so I guess what the, my question would be for you, what then is the role of art, mm. right? Like what 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 are what are some 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 goals of art that that are legitimate and that 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 qualify it as art? Well, you know, I I think I think art can serve masters. I think you know. It's so hard to div- to divorce the the past two thousand years from of art in Europe from Christianity. I mean, it's a, it's impossible to tease apart what it would have been without sure that singular not only patronage but that that hemming in that didn't allow any deviation from it. Right, right. But sure, art can serve a master. I mean, there's commercial art, there's film, there's television, there's you know, there's uh, music for sale, and they're they're all right. it's all art. Yeah. But it, it in service of something, and I guess uh, you know there is art that is in service of nothing. There's art that is just in service of the idea and the exploration. Uh-huh. Um, but to me, it you know commercial art, religious art is commercial art of a kind. Mm. It's selling a product, right? It doesn't mean it's not fucking beautiful. I mean, right? You know, I have a young gay atheist friend mm-hmm. who has a tattoo of the ecstasy of Saint Teresa. Oh yeah, uh, the, the sculpture. It's, it's, it's staggering how yeah. beautiful that piece of art is. Right. But, um, you know, the Sistine Chapel ceiling and, and everything that Michelangelo did was kind of in service of, of this very specific worldview. Right. And to me, that is craft and it is beauty, but it's not free expression. Right. Right. And, and so is that what you're looking for? When, well, I, like, like this guy who's defending and the, the, this religious art. Yeah. And uh, and saying that it needs to be up on par with with the the rest of the art community is the problem for you the fact that it's not truly free expression. I think so. Yeah. I okay. mean, I think. Uh, I mean, you you may have a different opinion. No, I it, think. Well, I, I I and I don't know if I, I've been thinking about this. And, you know, free expression um, pushes boundaries. Yeah. Right. For me, that that's something that I I like to see in artistic expression is something that's pushing the boundaries, whether it's, uh, right. You know, um, like in film, something that's never been done before mm-hmm. or a, a, a new novel way to, um, to tell a story. Right. Or, um, you know, like, like that's, that for me is what's interesting. Yeah. 
is is the the, the constant exploration of of the form oftentimes for, yeah. for me. Yeah. Um, and, but then also add on the emotional impact mm-hmm. and did, did they say something to me that I, I, I really haven't heard before that altered your way of thinking or, yeah. or made you examine something. And yeah. That, yes. Exactly. That's absolutely the, pr- that to me should absolutely be the purpose of art. Yes. Yeah, so but, can that not exist then in a religious context? Sure. I think so. Okay. I, I think it can, but to me, I think that art, you know, so an artist serving a re- uh, serving religion that I think is uh, not dangerous. Mm. You know, and the and really good art it should be dangerous, right? Mm. It should challenge authority. It shouldn't really be in the service of authority. Mm. Mm-hmm. So it's mm. not to say that you can't be an amazing artist who loves Jesus and paints for the Catholic Church. You you, you can make beautiful stuff, yeah, but you you can just. Dip one little corner of the crucifix in urine. <laughs> just, 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 a, just, a, just, a, just, just, uh, well, t- oh, Jesse there, Helms there is go. dead now, so you can just dunk. <laughs> you can dunk it like an Oreo. But, <laughs> but you know, uh, uh, great. You know, art that challenges the the pol- political paradigms and mm-hmm. power structures. Mm-hmm. You know, and has doesn't always have to be angry, but at least when it's challenging that. It, it it serves you know however unbalanced it serves as a balance okay. against authority so you know when when politics get really terrible and art gets really angry I think that's that's a great tension right you know, I don't want politics to be terrible but when it does and there is that incredible tension between right the artist saying fuck you I don't serve authority I will challenge it right then you get incredible you know think of the punk uh, the the punk music scene in, in the seventies yeah. coming out of Britain, you know, the anger and the rage and the rawness of it is pretty spectacular. Right. right, right you know, right. whereas what comes out of Britain now is kind of Coldplay. Right. You know, and, and it's not to say Coldplay is necessarily terrible. It just has no grit. It has no gut. And, right. And so I don't know if we get a little off track, but, uh, I, I don't know. I, I, I've, I go to churches all the time when I'm in Europe or when oh, I'm yeah. in South America and I look at the beautiful things and the Absolutely. weird shit and the bizarre relics and, uh-huh. and the bizarre polytheism of Catholicism. Uh, I and, love it. Yeah, yeah. I love it. And, yeah. but, uh, what if, what if that hadn't been the case? Like, I don't know what would that, what would the world look like if there hadn't been a singular fucking authority controlling all expression? It's, yeah. it's hard to even imagine, you know? Yeah. Uh, I mean, Europe without, Catholicism would have been pagan and God, every pagan I've ever met is just, <laughs> Oh my God, the dreadlocks and the didgeridoos. And that's what it would be. Oh, your all right. would be a bunch of hippies. Now you've convinced me. <laughs> I'm going to take the catechism. I don't know what you got, but, but yeah. I, and there's always been, you know, in the, certainly in this country, there's always been a wonderful tension between conservative orthodoxy and art. Right. You know, um, if you look at in the eighties, it was this madness with Jesse Helms and Nancy Reagan. Right. Quite I know we're not supposed to speak ill of the dead, but I no, was, can. I wasn't aware she was still alive, but, um, if you call that living, but you know, there are attacks on the NEA because of Rob, Robert Maplethorpe oh, I know. and, I know. and the piss Christ. And oh. it's like, Oh, art should be wholesome. That's what makes me crazy. Yeah. And that's the issue with religious art. It's not art. Fuck your wholesome art. Right. It's not art. That's packaging. Right. Right. Art shouldn't be. I, I don't even know what wholesome art is. The peanuts? I, yeah. Well, wholesome art is, it's just pretty. Right. It's just, it's, it's, it's just something to look at. It's, that's, de- it's that's pleasant. It's Thomas Kincaid. I was, yes. Is that where you were going? I couldn't remember his name. Yeah. Yeah. Thomas Kincaid. Yeah, the painter of light. <laughs> who, was, who was apparently an insane womanizing drunk. Oh, shut up. Oh, no. He was a terrible. Oh, my God. I walked into my brother's house years ago and there's hanging a Thomas Kincaid and I was just like what are you doing <laughs> tell me do it was an original up? they well they I don't I doubt no. it was an ori- it wasn't an original no those are worth hundreds of dollars <laughs> <laughs> no people pay a lot for those I things. know I know like this I like this was this was a painting of light. right so like he has like doesn't he have like a a bunch of monkeys and a in a warehouse somewhere, just they do knockoffs, painting. and I don't know if it's a digital process or if it's just people who've learned to copy that very, 
very difficult to copy style. I know he spent a lot of money on it, whatever it was. Oh, poor, like, poor and thing. And I was just like... Did it look good with all his Hummels? <laughs> <laughs> his spoon collection? No, that's my mom's house. No, that would be Yadros, right? Oh, Because yeah. yeah. no, my mom doesn't have any of that. Really? Like the, the Christus stuff. And yeah, 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 Mormons love Yadro. Yeah, no, no. Yeah. Uh, no, my mom is more Hummels and uh, uh, that kind of crap. Mm. You know? Kitsch. Uh, home, what, what, what was, she sold home interiors. Wasn't that a thing? <laughs> oh, the magazine? No, no, it was like, she was like, what was the name of the, 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 the little group that she sold for? And know. it was all just like, um, it was just the crap that you've seen. Th- like you've seen all this shit a oh. thousand times. You mean from they like just the sold like knickknacks, knickknacks and crap. Oh, yeah. okay. And, and pictures for the wall and a little. Little bre- those little brass leaf things. Oh my god! Right, you're killing and me. And sconces with yeah. like, with uh, hurricane little oh god. things, whatever. Yeah, yeah. that's uh, that's my mom's house. Oh lord. Yeah, it's, and see, that's some people. That's art. That that yeah, that's yeah. art. So, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, it's very it's a very pleasant home. I'm very skeptical of the idea of, of religious art. Yeah, that's my, my yeah my take on it. Yeah. Um, maybe we'll save another part of this conversation for next week. Let's do it. Because you're going to be back with us next week, right? Yeah. Or you just, you just go to your thing and I'll keep talking. <laughs> yeah. Cause I got some, I got some other, you, you got more. I got well, stuff. What I love, uh, that you brought up, uh, when we were discussing this, uh, before the show, trying to figure out what we we're going to do is, uh, all of your examples of, uh, attempts from religious groups at censoring right. art. Right. Uh, and, uh, I think that, I think we should just continue on and do a part two. Yeah. That's a this, great idea. Uh, next week. And maybe we could actually read something <laughs> rather than just, just winging it spew forth. <laughs> no. Well, if you've lived, if you've lived as long as Frank and I have in this country, you've, you've been a part, you've seen the culture wars. And so you can, you can kind of yeah. go, go uh, from memory. <laughs> right. Yeah, indeed. All right. Well, folks, like I said, I got to call it a little bit short today. Um, but if you'd like to chime in on anything that you've heard here today, you can do so by uh, uh, emailing us at podcast at thankgodimatheist.com. Or you can leave us a voicemail message by calling 424-666-8442. Uh, I promise we'll actually play a voicemail message uh, sometime soon. <laughs> uh, and then uh, if you'd like to find us on Facebook, go to facebook.com slash Atheist. And while on Facebook, you can also search for the TGIA Members Only Lounge. Uh, It's a closed group, so you have to request to join. Uh, Thanks, of course, to the Red Rock Hot Club for letting us use their music. And thanks to Mackenzie for all of her help on Facebook. And thanks to you, Mark. Thanks again, Frank. It's wonderful having you here. It's always a big favor. It's lovely to have you here as well. It ain't nothing. And and Dan can... uh, uh, is it a cruise this time? Or who? <laughs> the man leaves a hard, leads a hard life. I know. And I sh- we shouldn't be so. awful. We just, we just destroyed his refrigerator. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry, guys. We'll buy you more uh, string, string cheese. cheese. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, thanks for listening, everybody, and uh, have a great week. Bye. Bye.